Hi and welcome. So since Sim Update 8 for Microsoft Flight Simulator, we now have some sensitivity settings for the Toby Eye Tracker 5 and it's excellent. Um, it's pretty much now everything that we need and what we're waiting for. We'll quickly show you. So do we have, the first question is, do we have six degrees of freedom? We do. Okay, so we can go forwards and we can go backwards. And we can also go left and we can go right. Now you can adjust this so it's more sensitive. You will find with me that I won't make it super sensitive. So I'll go down to here, but I do use the mouse wheel. So I go and then use the mouse wheel to zoom in on some particular button that I want somewhere. But just for the purpose of say you can't see the parking brake down there. So I just want to lean down, have a look, bang, I've got the parking brake down. I don't have to use the mouse wheel for this. I can see the parking brake, click it, and that's the end of it, and I'm back again. So that's how I've got it set up. I haven't got it set up super sensitive. And the one or two times that I feel like I need to zoom in on something, so say I want to look at this in a bit more detail, that's when I'm going to use the mouse wheel, and then I can see the controls, and then I'm going to zoom out again. Now, the other thing to keep in mind, which Track IR 5 users like to mention all the time, is that um, they have something called true view. So you can zoom all the way in and then you can zoom all the way out in this view. But say you're looking left and you want to move the head forward, it doesn't really go forward in that direction. It's, sort of, it's still going backwards and forwards in this direction only. So like you can go forwards and backwards in this direction, but you're not going forwards and backwards in this direction. But you can use a keyboard. So what you could do is you can hold down left alt and then you're going to use left and right on the arrow key. So you can say you're in the co-pilot scene, so you want to look at something over there, well you just hold down the left mouse button and you're or zoomed all the way in on that control. It's probably going to be more important in different planes. This plane doesn't have any controls over there. Particularly we can't even open the doors, so it's not really the best example. We'll show you in the DC-6 towards the end of this video. But um, in some planes that is an issue. Now what you could do on top of that is okay but you can't really zoom in on whatever it is you're looking at well at that point you can then use the mouse wheel so you can then sort of like just look in that direction use your mouse wheel to scroll in on whatever it is that you're trying to look at I don't know say we're looking at this little control down here how to open and close the door hatch and now I can use the mouse wheel to log out again and then back to normal where I wanted to be so that's all good um, say you want to look at the roof of the plane you can sort of do that. You can move forwards and backwards a little bit without having to adjust anything. You can still use the arrow keys. Where these arrow keys are really cool is say you wanted to look at from the view of one of the passenger seats behind. So we just quickly go back here and we sit in this seat for instance over here and we sit down and then what we can do is we can look out a window and since they're just being a static view like a stationary view we can now sort of Look out the window, look at that window, look at that window. And we can see what's going on out there. We can look up a little bit, look over, lean over, see something that's further down below us and then go back. We can quickly jump over to the other side. We can look out this window, very much more like real life. And then you can sort of lean around and, and see what's going on. Oh yeah, I can see what's going on out there. And then very quickly come all the way back up to the front of the plane, put ourselves in the pilot seat. We can sort of look over the nose of the plane if we want to. We can look out there. You're going to want to adjust the head position control depending on what plane you're in and what your preferences are. Um, I haven't got it set super, super crazy, but um, we'll show you what we've got set up. One thing, if you're trying to use the Toby Eye Tracker 5 and nothing's working, it's just not going on for you, have a look at keyboard and mouse and make sure you reset this to default. So keyboard to default and mouse to default. You may also find you're not able to move around the world map until you set the keyboard to default. Um, keyboard to default and the world mouse to default. Both of those, set them. Here's the settings. So you can now see Toby's here. What's new is we've got a button here called sensitivity. Left click it. And here's my settings. Um, what I have got set up at the moment is eye and head tracking ratio, 0 0.20. You will find I lean towards using the eye tracking. So that's what this is showing. So I've got eye tracking responsiveness to 0 0.3. I've got the head tracking sensitivity, pitch your at 0 0.4. 
Sensor stabilization at 0 0.5. You've got the head tracking sensitivity for roll at zero. I basically don't use this. Um, there would be cases where it would be helpful, but I don't really find I tend to use roll very much. Then you've got head tracking sensitivity position just at five and head tracking auto center. This is a weird one, but if I said that all the way over to the right, I found it really hard to use. I was, yeah. So I had to set this to zero. Um, just be aware that you have to scroll down this to actually see a couple of these other controls. You may have to. So just be aware of that if you're not seeing all the controls, just make sure you slide down. But that's the controls that I'm using. And um, at least you've got a bit of an idea as to what is going on there. I just want to go back without changing any settings. Cool. And resume. So there we go. So we're now back into the plane. So yes, you can use your keyboard controls, left, alt, and then forwards and backwards will give you all of that. And then of course you can go left and right. And then you can also use the right alt, which will bring you up and down. And then you can go left and right as well. So you can do that. Um, and you can move your head forward physically in real life and look down at something because I'm moving it around. So you can see how you can do that and then go back out to wherever, how far back you want to go. Um, yeah, and it's also going to depend a bit on where you're sitting in relation to your monitor, how much movement you really want to do in real life. Um, so those settings are going to be adjusted depending on what you're doing there. Um, but I've shown you what settings I'm using, um, and I think it's going to change depending on the plane. But we're going to show you the DC6. I haven't got it installed yet because I had to reinstall all of Microsoft Flight Simulator to do this and get it to work. It was not working initially for me. Um, so I have reinstalled Microsoft Flight Simulator and I've lost the DC6 as a result. So I'm going to have to reinstall that and we'll come back and we'll show you the DC6. Okay, so now we are in the PMDG DC6 and if we jump into the plane, we can do a uh, look around. So we're using the Toby Eye Tracker 5 and if you push the space bar, you can still do the look up and down. So that's just pushing the space bar. Then of course, I can look around this with my eyes. So I can look around like so with my eyes. I can look up, all the way up there, all the way up there, just with my eyes, not moving my head here, just my eyes. So you can see I can do pretty much everything with my eyes, which is what I want. And then if I want to use my head, I can move my head. So I just move my head slightly left, slightly right. I can look down here. And I can look up there just with my head. And of course, you know, as you move your eyes, it's going to move a little bit as well. Now, we can move in and out, but um, the main thing that's important for me is to lean over like this and sort of get down here and then look up at those dials. And then I can also look all the way up here and I can see anything that I need up here. Again, of course, you can see I can look all the way around. I can look all the way up here and we'll go back down again. So yeah, that's all good. Say you wanted to just look at some particular instrument. So this is not like, you know, zoomed in enough. So you can then just use the mouse wheel and you can read it, use the mouse wheel, zoom out again. Go over to here, you wanna look at this one particular. You can see it up here and you can hold it pretty steady. Like with the settings I've got, you can hold it pretty steady enough to sort of stay looking at that one particular item. Um, you can go up to here quickly change whatever you need, go back. That's so much easier than me having to push something else. Now, one thing I was mentioning before is you had to hold down the right alt. You don't need to do right alt. I'm holding it down, it doesn't make any difference. But if you just use the arrow keys, obviously you can go left and right, up and down. But you will need to use the left alt if you want to go forwards and backwards like this. So there's that. Then if you have a little look down here, we can see this tablet. Now, of course, if I'm just doing this, that's not going in and out. So that's where the problem is. And even if I go forward and backwards, that's not going to work. But I just use, you know, the mouse wheel at this point. Zoom in and I can see whatever it is I want to see. I can go through my pages and then I can zoom out again. And I can sort of change where I'm sitting in terms of my position. So say if we wanted to look at something down there, we can sort of move our position around. We'll get all the way down to the ground. I don't know if we can get all the way in here. There we go. And so we can sort of see down there now. And then we can zoom out. And we can go back up to here. And I mean, the more you're using the plane or an individual different module, you'll get better at moving around within the plane. Um, of course, you can go over to here. We can go over, look down, zoom out a little bit. 
back off and we've pretty much got that view without having to change views and then we can just sort of jump over to here go back up and we're back into this view you want to look from the co-pilot view no worries you know you can sort of jump over there this is quite useful if you're just trying to look around an object so you can sort of see what's ahead you can see what's ahead what's there same with like you know at the windows if something's blocking your view you can just sort of jump over to here quickly see the wings so much easier to see the wings this way um and then yeah jump over we can look um behind us a bit so if we go into the center and we go all the way back we can now look at all the books and the stuff down here which you wouldn't really be normally doing so easily but that's what the toby r tracker is letting you do and then of course we can jump back here we can see all the the controls so i think this gives you a pretty good idea but um I'll show you my settings because these are slightly different with this module. So that's what I mean. I think you're probably going to change it depending on what module you're using, which plane you're using at the time. This is not vastly different though. So with this DC6, I've got eye and head tracking, 0.2. Eye tracking responsiveness at 0.3. I've got the head tracking sensitivity for pitch yaw now at 0.7. Center stabilization, 0.2. Head tracking sensitivity roll, you'll again notice I'm just not using it, I've got that at zero. Head tracking sensitivity for the position at four. And the head tracking auto center at zero, I don't use that. So, you've seen my settings. And you've probably got a pretty good idea of what it would be like. Um, there's some more PMDG modules coming out very soon. Um, it would be really great to check them out. And my gosh, if you've got the Toby R Tracker 5, you've got a really great experience. Hope that helps and everyone has a lot of fun. Bye for now.